Hi there, my name is Luke, and I'm going to make this video to try and explain how vapor barriers work in building homes in a cold climate. Uh, I live in Manitoba. We have very cold winters here, and uh, we use a lot of poly, as we call it here, six millimeter poly uh, plastic vapor barrier. I uh, hear it's not recommended for other climates uh, for various reasons. You can read up on that. But when you do use it, this is how it gets done. All right, let's take a look here. We have got our stud bays where there will be insulation in later. We use two by sixes here. And this section here, the framers put in insulation already. So this is the only reason why it's insulated right now because this house is obviously in construction. And we can see here that fluffy pink stuff, that's our R20 bat insulation. And uh, that's nominal R20, I'll get into um, nominal R values and real R values another time. But anyway, um, that's our, our pink fluffy stuff. And you can see the poly is just loose sticking up there. Eventually somebody's going to have to come in here and uh, our pros will take more poly and lap it over top of this stuff and glue it together with uh, what we call, well, what the brand is called uh, Acousta Seal. Basically it's uh, synthetic rubber. They squeeze it out of a caulking tube. You can see a little bit right here. The framers put this in ahead of time because they knew the guys that usually do it would not be able to get in behind there uh, later. So the framers are responsible for helping out the insulators by doing this ahead of time. And so the insulators will have another bead coming down here that'll join that together. Their overlapping pieces will come on there. Why do we need that caulking? Well, because if we just had the poly on the wall and the drywall on top of the poly, eventually uh, too much moisture would seep in there because it wouldn't be airtight. We need an airtight house to stop drafts and that Acousta Seal is actually our biggest draft stopper. It's the stucco on the outside of the house actually does a pretty good job as well but we also use vinyl sidings here and that kind of thing and uh, the biggest thing that actually stops drafts and makes the house airtight is the stuff and the stuff. Maybe I'll make another video later to show how much Acousta Seal we actually use in a home because it's kind of astounding. Anyway, um, let's talk about the ceiling. Now you see here above us, whoop, there is some poly sticking out of either side of that wall. There's that plastic there because our poly has to come up the wall, uh, the outside wall. Here, let me get out of that window light with all its glare. Um, okay, this, uh, this wall here is going to have to have poly coming up and down on top of the insulation and it'll join to this stuff that the framers put behind the wall to tie into. Whoop, you can't see that too well. Let me try another wall. Okay, this wall here. The, the framers put this piece on ahead of time because it's impossible to tie something in when you've got an adjoining wall in the way. This wall here is separating this bedroom. How do I show the bedroom? It's kind of hard given that these walls are all open. Okay, this bedroom from that there bathroom. Now, all right, uh, so we got our poly here that's going to get tied into. This is all going to be polyed. This wall in front of us this way ties into here and then that has to tie into the ceiling poly. Ceiling poly is extremely important because hot air rises and so um, all of this ceiling will have to have acoustic seal around the edges this way to seal the plastic to the ceiling. The drywall holds everything up as well and uh, the drywall also holds the insulation up there. If you have a wall with insulation and no poly that actually doesn't, uh, doesn't suffer too much too quickly. That is a problem that will come in over time as vapor slowly permeates through the drywall. Because of the fact that we mud our drywall so much that the drywall itself actually has a bit of an airtight seal and not to mention the paint over top of that, you can actually ha buy paints that are specifically made to, to make it a vapor barrier. How well they work is debatable, but anyway, um, you can make a wall that is, is almost vapor impermeable without the plastic. And so if we did just in this particular house, if we just skipped the poly altogether and we just did the, the drywall, the mud, the tape um, on that, the paint, 
Um, this wall would only get small amounts of moisture drifting in very slowly and eventually that moisture in the winter can sit in there and not dry out enough causing too much condensation when it gets cold because as we know um, uh, warm air creates, uh, carries more humidity and humidity when it contacts the cold starts to condense as that warm air loses its moisture as it gets drier uh, the air dries up but the materials do not the materials take the moisture as the air dries and so moisture gets in here and starts to slowly rot away all of our wonderful framing pieces and we start having problems with our house that can happen um, this problem doesn't come up a lot usually what happens is if somebody has messed up the vapor barrier it's more to do with there's uh, there's now a seam in the drywall somewhere like maybe at the floor whoop, underneath the baseboard um, or uh, or maybe you've gone and put too many pictures on your wall and just stuck a bunch of nail holes in where there are no studs in particular and there's all these little holes there and surprisingly enough those little tiny holes and, and those little seams will bring in enough moisture to start causing real problems. Uh, the thing is it's like we're going for an airtight house and that kind of perfection is, is so hard to get to. Chances are there's going to be issues and so we try to cover more bases. The, the, I guess the easiest way to make it perfect for Manitoba, as it were, is to do the poly and, uh, and acoustic seal. There are other forms of doing vapor barriers within walls. There are other designs that Joe Liebrich on uh, buildingscience.com will talk about and, uh, and they're very good ones and you should look those up if you can. But this is kind of how uh, most every house in Manitoba is built and a lot of them in Canada altogether. I think it's actually just about Canada wide the way that this design goes. Um, and so what else did I want to say? I can't remember. Well, that's all for now. Insulation, poly. Oh yeah, what happens if you actually have poly and no insulation and you've got an airtight seal on your wall but there's just no insulation there. Um, let's say... Back to our staircase example. Let's say that if this spot here, they overlapped the poly and they acoustic sealed it well, and uh, you know what, they just forgot to put a bat of insulation in here, and so you got plastic and no insulation on the other side. What happens is you have an airtight seal and a really, really, really quick insulation barrier here. Uh, I, let's call that the thermal barrier. Yes, that's the correct term. You have a, a perfect vapor barrier, but a really, really poor thermal barrier. The heat transfer goes from, you know, you got plus 21 degrees inside, and then it's minus 35 outside, and that seeps right up to here, and it's all going to start wanting to condense here. You don't really get condensation so much on the inside, although actually you can. Yes, you can have frost on the inside of your wall. I've seen that, especially on window seats and in the corners, the upper corners in walls. Anyway, um, the condensation can happen on both sides and what happens with the opposite side here is that this air gets so cold is that it actually uh, starts to develop kind of an overlaying frost. The heat is actually still radiating through here uh, slowly even though it's airtight, the heat goes through air tightness and it actually heats up this area enough to get condensation inside of it. So you kind of broke your system by forgetting the insulation there. Something that happens a lot more commonly with insulation is that in your attic, you have spots where say, you see those cardboard insulation stops there. There's tiny little pinpricks of light. Pinpricks of light that um, uh, allow air to come in. And if you have a big enough spot that lets in that air from the outside, that air can blow your, your loose insulation so hard to create essentially a bald spot in the attic. And if you have a spot that's been blown out like that, or let's just say that uh, while the guys were up there, there's some really complicated piece of geometry up there that they forgot, um, that spot can then have the same kind of problem I was just describing, where, which I have seen definitely in, in a number of cases, uh, that has a perfect vapor barrier but an imperfect uh, thermal barrier and those are, are tricky to diagnose when you're up there because of the fact that the radiant heat that's coming off of there is not like a leak in the vapor barrier. When you have a leak in the vapor barrier 
it, it's like a spout of moisture that's going out of there. The hot air is coming up and cooling off so fast because it's a draft that you have uh, frost building up in that immediate area really quickly when it's cold enough. And so it can point to the problem like a bullseye. However, with the thermal barrier, uh, thermal barrier problem, it's just such a radiant kind of heat that's creating the frost that I go up into an attic and I'm like, why is there frost kind of all over the place and causing problems, but not like in a gigantic concentration anywhere? This is kind of a, a midi medium level frost in a wide area. And that has been when there's been a problem with uh, not having the proper thermal barrier. Okay, did you get all that? Did you learn something? I hope so. If, uh, if you did put something in the comments, if you have any questions, um, just uh, uh, post them there as well, and maybe I can make more videos that have uh, some fun stuff like that. Okay.